John 3.16 is known as the gospel in one verse. If you have been in church any significant amount of time, you most likely have memorized this verse in one or more translations. If you have not memorized it, I challenge you to try your best to commit this scripture to memory, for it is the foundational truth of what a Christian believes. What, Pastor Wood, does this scripture teach us? What does it teach us? It teaches us for God so loved the world. He can stop right there. This verse tells us that God, the creator, God, the sustainer of the world, loved and loves us. That truth should make all of us out hallelujah that's right new providence God loves you and he loves me even when we were separated from God as the result of sin he still loved us enough to send his one and only son, Jesus, into this world to die in our place. And I don't know about you, but I am so glad that God loved and continued to love me. Are you glad about it? Now preceding our selected scriptural text for today, we find a brother named Nicodemus who comes to Jesus to have a conversation. Now, Nicodemus was a brother who had human credentials. He wasn't just a nobody. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He was a religious leader. He was a member of the religious group called the Pharisees. He was a master student of the law of Moses. Nicodemus was somebody. And if you are a good Bible reader, you know that the Pharisees despised Jesus and his teachings. They wanted to get rid of Jesus because Jesus was taking many of their followers. People would leave them in their synagogues to follow Jesus because they testified saying we never heard a man speak like this. 
So the Bible says that Nicodemus sought to have a personal audience with Jesus. Nicodemus recognized that Jesus was not an ordinary individual. Now the Bible says that Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Somebody say at night. Nicodemus came to Jesus under the cover of darkness. Nicodemus does not want everybody to know that he is seeking Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, are you trying to keep your need of Christ a secret? Are you living such a wretched life that you are publicly ashamed to let others know that you need Jesus? Believers, let me make it personal. Are you living such a wretched life that you are publicly ashamed to let others know that you are a Christian? Somebody say, hmm. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Now, maybe, deacons, just maybe, Nicodemus comes at night because he feels that the crowd would be smaller and that he would stand a better chance to have an audience with Jesus without him being seen. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe Nicodemus came to Jesus at night because remember, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, Nicodemus was to despise and try to get rid of Jesus. He wasn't supposed to ask Jesus about getting a better understanding of what Jesus was teaching. He was to reject Jesus' words and try to take Jesus out. But we see the God who loves us demonstrate his love by, first of all, receiving Nicodemus. Y'all know that Jesus did not have to receive Nicodemus knowing who Nicodemus was. He was a member of the group that hated Jesus. He was a member of the group that was trying to get rid of Jesus. Y'all know that Jesus could have said, I don't want to deal with this man. Tell him to go back home. It's night. Tell him to come back in the morning. <laughs> Jesus could have rejected Nicodemus. But I'm so glad that Jesus will receive anybody. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't say, y'all didn't respond to that correctly. I said, I'm so glad that Jesus will receive anybody. I'm 
I'm glad that Jesus will receive sinners and those who don't have it all together. I'm glad that Jesus will receive those who are skeptics and even doubters. And Jesus still will welcome them. I am glad that when I came to Jesus, just as I was weary, wounded, and sad, I'm glad that Jesus received me. And because he received me and received you, we found in him a resting place. And he has made us glad. Is there anybody here that is glad that Jesus did not turn you away, but received you unto himself? Nicodemus understood that Jesus was not an ordinary man. We see this truth in the words that Nicodemus used in approaching Jesus. The Bible says that Nicodemus says to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus admits that there was something special about Jesus. He acknowledges that only God could do the signs and wonders that Jesus performed. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I know there is nobody like Jesus. Tell your neighbor, there's nobody. Nobody like Jesus. Jesus is the only hope for our world today. Jesus is who we need and he is the answer for the world today. Above him, yeah, you got it. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Nicodemus says to Jesus, I know that you are a teacher who has come from God. And Jesus replies, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God. Unless they are born again. Nicodemus did not understand Jesus' response. Nicodemus asked Jesus a question. He says, how can someone be born when they are old. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Now I don't know about you, but deacons, when I was a child, I was told that you shouldn't question Were you taught that? I'm 
I'm so glad that I have grown up spiritually to know that those who taught me that were sincerely wrong. Y yes, they might have been sincere, but they were sincerely wrong. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I can ask God my questions. Tell your neighbor, you can question God. But understand that it's solely left up to him whether to answer your question or not. Matter of fact, you're a good Bible reader. Jesus tells us to ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Jesus also tells us that we have not, Brother Ricky, because we, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, it's quiet in here. <laughs> Nicodemus asked Jesus a question. And guess what? Jesus responds to his question. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that because God loves me, he doesn't only receive me, but he responds to me. I'm so glad that Jesus does not get intimidated when I ask him, a question. Why doesn't he get intimidated? Because he knows everything. I don't have to worry about offending him by my questions. Thank God that he is willing to respond to us and make himself known unto us and answer us. Now, New Providence and friends, I must admit that I have had my moments when I acted like I didn't hear it. Come on and snatch those halos off your head. You have had moments when people were talking to you and you willfully did not respond to them. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. Am I right about it? We call it the quiet treatment. Nicodemus asked Jesus a question and Jesus, the Christ, responded. And I'm so glad that Jesus is not like some of us. Jesus responds to Nicodemus' question by stating, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and the spirit. You must be born again. And let's not keep you too long. Jesus in verse 16 reveals to Nicodemus how much God 
loved him. And not only him, the whole entire world. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, New Providence and friends, I don't know when Nicodemus reformed, that is to change his life for the better. But Nicodemus, after hearing the gospel message, changed his life. Somebody say he changed his life. And in closing, we see the God who loves us demonstrate his love to Nicodemus and to us by reforming us. Mm. Somebody say I'm reformed. I don't know about you, but I have been reformed or changed by the supernatural power of God. I don't know about you, but I know that I am not the same person that I once was. And if you are in Christ, you are not the same person that you used to be. Nicodemus had gone or undergone a reformation. He was no longer the same person. How do you know this, Pastor Wood? I'm glad you asked. Remember, I just told you that Nicodemus was a part of the group called the Pharisees who wanted to get rid of Jesus. But if you continue reading your Bible, when you get over to John chapter 19, Verses 38 through 40. We see in the Bible a reformed or changed Nicodemus. For the Bible tells us that after Jesus was crucified, after Jesus had died, that there was a brother named Joseph of Arimathea who went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Y'all remember that, right? Now, Joseph, the Bible says, was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. And with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body of Jesus down from the cross and took the body away. Hmm. But when we get to verse 39 of chapter 19, the Bible tells us that Joseph was not alone. Say he wasn't alone. The Bible says that Joseph was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. And the Bible says 
that Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes that weighed about 75 pounds to bury the body of Jesus with. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them, Joseph and Nicodemus, wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. Tell your neighbor, Nicodemus was reformed. Thank God that his love has the power to reform us. The hymn writer wrote, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Is there anybody here in this sanctuary who are or watching or listening, can you testify since Jesus came into your heart that your life has changed? And I don't know about you, but my life has changed for the better since Jesus came in to my heart. Thank God for his love. His love that lifted me. His love lifted you. When we were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, when we were very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more but somebody say but but the master of the sea heard our despairing cry and from the waters he lifted us now say are we I don't know about you but love I said love, I said love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love, God's love, God's amazing love lifted me. And he lifted you. So we all to thank God that he demonstrated his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, what did Christ do? He died for us. The righteous for the unrighteous. The just for the unjust. Thank God. But I tell you, I'm happy today that I am a recipient and you are a recipient of God's wonderful salvation. And we are saved simply because he loved us. Come on, stand.